Hello and welcome to our CAD clip series on massing Revit uh, using Revit 2015. And we're going to talk a little bit and learn a little bit about um, conceptual massing as well as in place massing that happens within a project as opposed to um, an external um, conceptual massing family, which you then almost link into the project. So I thought I would start off by just uh, pointing out, of course, if you go to the CAD Clips webpage and you go to our Revit CAD Clips um, page and you go down here, you can browse. But of course, in here, you can, you know, search for the word mass. And you'll get all kinds of videos in here and then you can watch these um, videos, download them, etc. Um, if they're not on the DVD set that you happen to have or however that turns out, if you have a login, you can log in here and you can download or watch the video. Um, and I always say if the video is, you know, even a little bit older, maybe it's using a different version. It's using Revit architecture or structure, actually conceptual massing for the for until they became into one product in Revit only came with the architectural version. But anyway, um, even if you um, do watch it in an older video, our objective here is to, you know, get you from A to B. And if that happens to be using something a little different version or a little older or the buttons have changed or there's a dialog box that looks a little bit different, you know, that really doesn't matter. The main thing is, is that you learn how to make the object. So we, we do have some really good um, um, lessons here on different massing. So by all means, have a look inside of there. So here we are at our uh, Revit 2015, kind of what I call the um, desktop or the recent files. And normally we're up here in this area with projects and stuff. And you have to be careful if you're using um, central files. You don't want to pick on these files. You want to go open up the central file and create a new um, local file. We're going to talk a little bit about down here in the families area. You can open a family. You can say, I want to create a new family and it'll go in and ask you to pick a template file, which is absolutely critical. And then you can say, I want to create a new conceptual mass, which is what we're going to talk about here. So we're going to go into here and it's going to go to um, a very specific folder and depends on if you're set up for um, Imperial or metric. And I want to do this one in metric. So I'm going to click on here and go back to family templates. And instead of doing I for Imperial, okay, that's where that is located here go into the metric version and there it is all by itself conceptual massing oops and there's one template file RFT Revit template file that's it hit open one of the first things that you notice in the environment of creating a conceptual mass is that panning over here with my middle mouse button is that levels this is a level and these are reference planes. Reference planes and levels show up kind of in 3D. Um, I wish the rest of Revit did that as well. So if we just want to snoop around, if we go to our south elevation, there's that level that we saw. There's our reference planes. Okay. If we go back to here, there's those reference planes. And if we go to our 3D view, there they are there. Okay. So it's a bit different from a normal kind of family environment. So let's go to our level one. And I think what we'll do is we'll create kind of a, a high rise kind of um, a twisty kind of, um, you know, uh, Dubai style um, high rise. So um, I just want to get a feel for distance and measurement here. So let's just put in some reference planes. Oops, not reference line, reference plane. Use your shift key if you want to make sure that, you know, they go nice and straight. Okay. And I can hit escape, escape on the keyboard. Now, this is the center of my building. I might as well kind of keep it that way. I can also work off on one quadrant as well instead of being centered. So let's just throw some dimensions on here. And I, you could do it any way you want. I'm just going to click on here and make these guys equal. And I'm going to do another dimension from here to here to here. Place it, make it equal. Escape, escape on the keyboard. Now I'm going to do an overall dimension from here to here. 
place it out there. Overall dimension from here to here, place it out there. Escape, escape. Now, the first thing you'll notice if you've made other families is, let's change the scale here. Uh, 1,000, just so I can see my numbers a little bit better. Is we're at, you know, 68 meters by 90 meters. And so let's say I want to make it, you know, 100 meters wide and, you know, 75. This is the footprint, right? We're looking at the um, the floor plan of it at this point. And I'm just get, trying to get a feeling for the space. Now, what's interesting is if I pick on here, I can't change this number like you can in a normal normal family. You can pick in here and you can change this. You'll find this frustrating that... I can't change that number to, you know, I've got my equal set. Now I want to give my overall and it should spread it out. Okay. In conceptual massing families, it won't let you do that. It won't. Normally you can pick on here and this will turn blue and you change it. And then it just, you know, splits it up. But we need to turn this into a parameter first. So we're going to go into here and go add a label, add a parameter. And we're going to call this, you know, base width. And it's going to be instance, specific, sure, dimensions, everything's good, hit OK. Now I'm going to grab this dimension, turn that into a parameter and call it base, what did I call the other one? Uh, base width, base depth. instant so it only happens because you can load more than one, one of these into the project. You can have a bunch of these little buildings. There we go. Now what I can do is I can pick on here and I can change. Well, I can't change it from there, but I can change it up in my properties window. I'm going to go base width 100 meters and I can just say 100 M and it'll convert it. And I'll say this is, you know, let's go 80 M for meters. You can even put feet and inches. It'll convert it. Click on there, hit apply, hit OK. Now I can pick on here and pull this guy out. You'll notice that it, it automatically converts it to be 2D as soon as you drag that point out. And I'm going to show you why. Because it truly is a 3D, I'm just pulling these guys out. And I like to have everything kind of nice and tidy. You can see this guy. Notice when I pull it out, it automatically leaves the 3D points where they were. The original clicks. Okay. This guy's pinned. Okay, I don't really need to worry about that. I just kind of want crossing corners here. So I've got, you know, 100 meters, basically a football field wide by, you know, 80 meters wide. Now let's go to the south elevation. Okay, now we need to go to the top of the building. Well, the top of the building, I'm going to say, is about 250 meters high. So let's go draw another reference plane somewhere up in here, I suppose. Draw a dimension that goes from here to here. Place it over here. Let's change my scale to be a thousand so it's like the other one. Escape, escape. So that's 175 meters high. Let's make it 250. So I'm going to pick on there and make this 250 M for meters. It's going to convert that up. Now I can grab these. Notice again, it's only dragging the 2D point. If I go to my 3D view, okay. Shift middle mouse. Okay, there's my what I've got so far. And that again is now these are the actual 3D points. See that? That's my reference plane that's way up top. That's the 250 mil 250 meter reference plane. Okay. Okay, and there's this guy. So I don't Oh, these are the center ones are pinned, but so I don't need to um, be too concerned with it. You know, I have this guy up at the right height. Okay, if I look at my top view in here, you know, that's pretty much what I have. So if I shift middle mouse, you know, I'm ready to actually start to model my geometry. And, 